Hello, and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. When I was putting together the information for this video, which I might add took a significantly long time, I found that Cambria County, the PA Historical Marker Program, better known as the Blue Signs, and all the local historical societies really messed this one up. But, pardon the pun, I dug a little deeper and got hardcore with the genealogy and was able to sort out the story of today's visit. A Revolutionary War veteran, a hero, and most disturbingly, disturbingly to this part of PA during that time, a, a Catholic. See you in a minute. The story of today's visit is all about Captain Michael McGuire, born in 1717 just outside of Taneytown, Maryland, near the Big Pipe Creek on a tract of land called Patience Care. Not to be confused with the stories regarding the, well, not a captain, Michael McGuire, son of Bartholomew and brother of Jane McGuire Dowling, the girl from the McGuire Massacre. What's that? You don't know about Jane and the McGuire Massacre? The story of the girl who held onto a cow's tail and then was drugged for 10 miles to Fort Standing Stone in Huntingdon, narrowly escaping an Indian abduction? Well, I'll put a link up in the corner. It was the very first video of this channel, and probably one of the best stories recounting the truth of a situation that if it was not for the documented witnesses and their retelling, would be absolutely unbelievable. Back to Captain Michael McGuire. Up until 1755, there were no legitimate settlers in this area mostly because this was all Native American territory and was still under contract for purchase. But from 1744 through 1755, there were a handful of commissioned traders and treaty negotiators whom had light permissions to cross the land. The most famous would be the first trader for this territory, John Hart, who led directly to the opening up of Huntington County to his good friend, another trader, Peter Shaver whom created the very first settlement in the New Territories in 1755, Shavers Creek. After the area was opened up to the public, more explorers found their way into the area. Michael was born in 1717, and by the time 1755 came around, he was a 38-year-old man with a well-established name in trapping. When the New Territory became available, Michael would often venture deep into the Pennsylvania Alleghenies in order to reap the rewards of trapping an untouched by modern man location. Yes, the natives lived here and did plenty of their own trapping, but not in the same manner of the white man who would come to an area and totally eradicate all indigenous animals for the sake of a dollar. Now let's jump backward to Michael's father, Michael McGuire Sr. and his mother, Patience Wells. Michael Sr. and Patience were devout Catholics who did not live directly in any big city like Frederick, Maryland, but rather on a small farming tract of land that they mortgaged outside of Taneytown, known for its housing of Catholic refugees during a time of extreme religious prejudice in the colonies. This tract was named Patience Care after Michael Sr.'s wife, Patience. Back to Michael Jr. In November of 1775, seven months into the Revolution, Michael Jr. became a commissioned member of the Colonial Army. There is not much in as far as what he did to garner rank up to captain, but that could just be a matter of non-disclosure or documents buried in stacks somewhere. What does come up is that his position of captain was also as a direct report to General George Washington, which I don't have any specific breakdown on, because above a captain in the militia, there would have been majors, lieutenant colonels, and colonels. So I don't quite understand how he would have been a direct report to General George Washington, unless they mean everyone in the colonial army was a direct report of General George Washington. Now, was he in direct command under Washington? Well, Washington pretty much only spoke with high-ranking officers in the rank of general or lieutenant general or admiral, maybe a couple of colonels and a small group of what he would have deemed gentlemen. I have at this point been unable to deem what or how Captain Michael McGuire was awarded such a title as hero. I'm not saying he was not, I'm just pointing out that there is nothing out there saying he was. But that's not the end of his story. 
in this portion of Michael's tale, the reality of a hero, albeit not of war, comes out in spades. After the revolution, Captain Michael McGuire most likely had a really nice purse full of bounty, where post-war bounty was land grant for your services in the military. Now, I'm speculating here. Although Washington did shut down a lot of anti-Catholic or irreligious groups and behaviors, such as the celebration of Guy Fawkes Day, there was still a significant amount of religious grief between all the different branches of Christianity, Judaism, and paganism. Michael took his bounty and pioneered an exploration out along the Catanning Trail or Frankstown Path and went beyond Frankstown, Pennsylvania, which at that time was the furthest settlement west. When he reached the Allegheny Plateau, just north and west of what is currently Altoona, he found a small valley that suited his needs, and he built a hunting cabin. In short time, he acquired over 12,000 acres of land in the area along the current Clearfield Creek. He bounced around for a bit, and in 1780 built a second cabin, which later became the homestead of Augustine Hott, the hostler of Father Augustine Smith, or more commonly known as Prince Galitzin. In 1784, he built his third and final cabin, this one further down the valley in an old forest filled with original growth oaks. This location is now known as Loretto. It is said that his only neighbors were that of Blair's Mill, whom were over 12 miles away, which I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's the modern day Holidaysburg area. According to historical record, Captain Michael McGuire was the first white man to settle within the present bounds of Cambria County. He then sent word to his family back in Taneytown, Maryland, and began granting multiple family members land tracts. Before too long, a great exodus of Catholics left Maryland, and all came to what was now known as Captain Michael McGuire's Settlement, the first settlement on the Allegheny Mountain and the soon-to-be-established Cambria County. And thus began Michael's legacy. A man who fought in the war, carved his way through the Pennsylvania wilderness, created a settlement, and established, unknowingly, a place where Catholics could live in peace. Again, the border between Maryland and Pennsylvania was still not formally established in the eyes of Maryland, so he had to move far enough to ensure that he was fully within Pennsylvania, the only colony at this time that had true and absolute freedom of religion. Captain Michael McGuire lived out his years and passed in 1793, but even then he was not done with what he had set out to do. In death, he left 400 acres of his remaining lands to John Carroll, the first Catholic Bishop of the United States. All of this man's generosity to his fellow Catholics and patriotism to a country that had just barely formed, giving away more than he had ever taken and sacrificing it all for the welfare of his fellow man, freedoms and liberties that had never before been seen by his generation. That, in my book of who we once were, is an absolute hero, whether by war or survival. I am at the internment site of a great man. So I'm here at Captain Michael McGuire's stone, and I just wanted to read you the epitaph on here. He manifested his zeal for the glory of God and the salvation of souls by bestowing this land for the benefit of the resident clergy. May he rest in peace. Amen. It's pretty interesting. So up here we have a carving that, believe it or not, to the naked eye you could barely see it. Some of it's polished, some of it's not. If you hit it with water, which I'm not going to do at this time, it would show up nice and clearly. On the back are the people who actually put this stone together and did the donation for the stone. And it's done in an atypical, well, hate to say it this way, but Masonic manner, if you know what I mean where lots of messages and names and things can only be seen if you actually wet the stone appropriately and put it on the back of the stone. Which brings the question, I wonder which way it's facing. Huh, curious. Now, you may think that's McGuire's story's end, but make sure you watch next week's video when we actually visit the results of his altruism toward the Catholic Church. Remember, if you haven't already, click like, subscribe, for more odd to see stories of who we once were. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.